This is the plaintiff, Donald McGill. He says he loaned the defendant money, and she promised to pay him back, but hasn't. This woman has bad moral character because he discovered she stole his debit card and went on a spending spree with it. Bottom line, he wants the $395 she owes him, and he needs the judge to set her straight today. So she goes ahead and pays him back. This is the defendant, Danielle Everett. She says the plaintiff wanted to have a relationship with her, but she let him know she was working things out with her husband and wasn't interested. The guy even confronted her husband, and the cops had to be called on him because he was out of control. Bottom line, she doesn't owe him all this money, and she's pretty sure the judge will agree. She's accused of failing to cough up the dough. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant stole his credit card and went on a spending spree, and he wants his money back. But the defendant says the plaintiff wanted to have a relationship with her and gave her money for things, but she told him she was working things out with her husband, and here they are. It's the case of MasterCard of her own destiny. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. McGill, you're suing Ms. Everett for $395 in a, a various loans that you made to her and that, according to you, Correct. she will not pay you back for. How do you know right. Ms. Everett? Uh, we both live in the same trailer park, and um, I used to see her walking her dog down the street now and again. How we actually got speaking to each other, I don't remember. I think it was through a mutual acquaintance, but I'm not sure. All right, and what kind of relationship did the two of you have that she felt comfortable asking you for money? Um, I don't think it was me. I think she would ask anybody, but... Um, but were you close? Uh, she happened to, She No, no, not at all. Uh, she happened to be here one time, and uh, she was uh, complaining about uh, her lot in life. She felt lonely. She was isolated. She didn't have any transportation. Uh, she didn't have a phone, so she could well, she had a phone, but there was no service. It was disconnected. Um, so she couldn't talk to anybody. And uh, she was going on about that. And then she uh, she asked me for, I think, $20 if I could loan it to her because uh, I, I don't know, I remember what she had to do, something. So you she loaned her the $20? To, uh, I did. Uh, the first time it happened, she, um, she offered to do some work around my place here for the $20. And I really didn't have anything to do, anything for her to do. So I just said, you know, here, I'll loan it to you. And, and when was um, she supposed to pay it back? I didn't give, I didn't put a time on it. All right. So you just but, told her to pay you when she could? Something like that, yeah. Okay. But over the next period, over the next month or six weeks, whatever, uh, she needed $10 for cigarettes. She needed $20 to give somebody gas money to take her somewhere. And by the end of a month or six months, it was up to about $195. Then one day she came over, and uh, it, the real sense of urgency, she needed her, uh, ten, $100 because her sister had to pay something the next day or the kids were going to kick out of school. Well, I live on Social Security. You know, I can't save the world, but I don't want the kids kicked out of school either. So I'm kind of mulling this over, and she's like, Somebody's getting paid in a few days and we'll pay you back. Or more likely, uh, they, whoever they are, had a fortune saved up in food stamps and they'd come out and take me shopping. Okay. Well, food is a good thing, so I let her have loaned her the hundred. I didn't have it with me. Her sister drove out and uh, we went over to an ATM machine. Well, then just a few days over after that, I think it was uh, the end of January, she came over, she wanted another 100 because her mother had to have a car fixed so she could get to work. Well, now I'm like, wait a minute, now I'm subsidizing the whole extended family here. That's what I said, well, if I give you 100 that's going to get it up to 395 So I want an IOU for the whole amount. Oh, and now you want an out. IOU. So now you have her write out a promissory note, correct? Yes. Who does yes. the writing? She does the writing? She did the writing, yes. And, and that promissory note, 
So here's the IOU that, according to you, she writes out, and it says $395. Okay. It takes a while for you to catch on, right? That maybe she's taking you for a ride? You think she was taking you for a ride? <laughs> uh, well, so, yes, after a while, I did. Um, on the, at the end of January, I think it was the 30th, she called me from somewhere, and uh, she wanted me to send her $20. I said, what do you mean, send it to you? She said, well, just use Cash App. And I said, I don't have that. I don't use any of these things. She said, well, put it in there. Now, I figured I was safe doing that because I had the IOU for the other amount. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. For how long had you been loaning her money and you had never seen a penny back? From the middle, early to middle December 2021 to... Um, Towards the end of January. Okay, so if you're not seeing any money and all she does is take, 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 but she doesn't give anything, why do you contemplate loaning her another 20 bucks? <laughs> uh, Were you well, sweet on her? No, not at all. She Did you make a married... pass at her? No. Okay. No, not at all. So no. when she tells you uh, load Cash App on there, what do you do? Well, I did try to load it in. I was just making too many mistakes. I got frustrated. I said, look, if you want this, come and do it. So let me see if I got this right. You now invite her into your home so that she can yeah. use your phone and you hand her your debit card. Right. Um, yes. How'd that go? Um, what happened is she came in the door with the dog. And uh, I have two pretty shabby reclining chairs. And in between them is a rather large uh, TV tray kind of thing with a keyboard and mouse and some stuff on it. So I handed her the card, and I, I, I thought I was safe doing that because she didn't have my PIN number. And so she put the stuff in and did whatever. And then she put my card back down on this tray. And within a, less than two minutes, she said, oh, the dog has to go out. Uh, I didn't hear the dog say anything, but they went out the back door, and she didn't come back. Neither did the dog, but the dog was an innocent bystander. And neither did your debit card. Well, I didn't know that till the next morning. I got up and I was heading for the coffee pot, and then I noticed it wasn't on the tray where she left it. All right, and did you check to see if anybody had used it the night before? Yeah, I did, did. immediately. I went to the, and? check my bank account, and there were three charges on there from the night before, one for $75, one for 20 and one for six dollars and ninety-five cents, I believe. True. And I called the bank. And you called the bank, and you contested those. I called the bank right away. Yes, and uh, they they canceled the card and issued me a new one. All right, and, the, and then, the, they credited you those amounts. So you're not suing for that here, but you're throwing it no. in for. The only reason I mention this because I'm not out any money there. I'm just out a lot of nuisance time. Right. But. Uh, the reason I bring it up is, is just to attest to her character, or lack thereof. Okay. Let me hear from you, Ms. Everett. Hi, Judge Million. Uh, well, half of what he's saying is not correct. Um, he's never loaned me. He loaned me $100 one time, and yes, my sister did need the $100. And I did go, he did give me the 20 the first time, like he said, that was true. And he lent me, I think another 10, it was to get cigarettes. And he did lend me the $100. He never lent me $100 twice. That's not true. I never had his debit card. Okay, and so according to everything you just said, then you owe him $250. No, no, no. He got paid back. And he also Do came out. Do you have out... a receipt for paying him back? No, because it was cash. But Right. No, husband... that's exactly when you need a receipt is when it's cash. If you paid I him know. by check, you wouldn't need a receipt. You could show your canceled check. So right. the time you actually need a receipt is when it's cash. So watch exactly, this. Right. Did he, she pay you back? No. no. Mr. McGill, oh, you're saying no. Oh. Okay. No, he's gonna say no. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, of course he's gonna, he's say, gonna no. say no, Ms. Everett. And of course, I'm not gonna believe you unless you show me a receipt. Because why would he sue you if you had paid him all back? That what would be his reason to come to court and bother to comp f file a complaint and have to face me and everything? What would be the point if you had paid him back? And all you would Listen. have to do if you, if you don't have a receipt is just before the money leaves your hand is grab the nearest roll of toilet paper and the nearest crayon and say, <laughs> I got $20, I got $100, I got to paid $250, that's all. Or send a text and have them say, yes, you just paid me. And then you've got it in right. writing. But right. you didn't do that, right? No, I didn't. No. no.
He says that he has an IOU from you, and I am looking yeah, at it but I did from not January write an 25th. On there. Wait, did you write out this IOU? When I thought, when I wrote that promissory note, there was no amount on there. I did not put no amount on there. I wrote the promissory note out, and I signed it. There was Wait, never I'm an sorry. amount. Wait, stop. Why would you write a promissory note and not put an amount? What's I the point of the thinking. note? My sister was in a hurry, okay? I wasn't thinking. I did right, write no, the promissory note No, 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 you're thinking out. enough to write, I, but, Danielle K. Everett, do owe Don McGill, uh, and then there's a, the amount of three ninety five. dollars I mean, you, you thought enough to do that. Listen, I'm not he talking came to out, you now, Mr. McGill. I'm talking to you, Ms. Everett. Why yes, would you sign a promissory note and leave it blank? That, that's... I wasn't, we, we wasn't finished. He never told me an amount to put on there. Then don't leave until he tells you the amount. All you had to do was write three digits or don't well, write the promissory note. Why would you sign a, pro a blank promissory note? Well, I wrote the promissory note out. Yes, and, and then you left it, and then you signed it, and then you handed it to him for, for what? What reason would you do that? If you don't have time to wait one second while he calculates then why would you do any of this? Because you're in too much of a rush. So leave. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, um, and, and, and the fact that he said that he, he called the cops because my husband acted crazy, that is not true. My husband didn't even see that man until after he called the cops. The cops, for one, and that was when the debit, he said the debit card came up missing. I never took that man's debit card, okay? Uh, he did, there, he did go? take Mr. I took did it get that cigarettes. night and somebody used it. No, they it. didn't. Somebody no, put didn't. seventy-five dollars worth that, of gas. How do you know? No. How do you know they didn't? Uh, well, what me? It might have been the, oh, the girl that, that lived down. Oh, but that wasn't what came out of your Listen. mouth. Wasn't it? Wasn't I? Didn't do that. What came out of your mouth is no, they didn't. All right, but you didn't take the card, even though you were the last person there. No, I didn't. Okay. If I wanted anything or need anything, I would ask him. Yeah, that, I don't have well, to that take brings nothing. me to I another question. Why are you hitting this gentleman up for money every time? Listen, that you I met him through a girl that got kicked. She actually got kicked out the uh, trailer park because she was prostituting. And he had her and her husband that was tricking her out living with him. And he got several complaints to our manager, the manager of the trailer park, um, for her being there. Because when she got kicked out, her, her husband was never allowed back in here. And she had, when I was walking by one day with my dog, she had asked me for a cigarette. I told her I didn't have one. I guess he was angry with her because he came out on the porch saying something to her. He offered me a drink. I told him I didn't drink, which he is an alcoholic, okay? Okay. I know um, what a bad person he is. He's an alcoholic. He's not. He's I'm not saying he's a bad person. A prostitute. I'm trying to understand Listen, why you, I'm Ms. not Everett, saying he's a bad person. Stop talking over I'm, me. Stop talking over me. I am trying to find out why you are constantly hitting him up for money. That's what I'm trying I to find. I didn't. Out. I asked him twice. I asked him for hundred dollars once, and that's when my sister needed it. And then the Period. forty. Yeah. Yep. And then the forty. Twenty and, 20 then, and ten. And then the that's ten. That's thirty. That's hundred and thirty dollars. Okay. Well, we can argue. You can yell as much as you like about what the amount is. Oh, I'm but, not trying to. I'm all not right, trying but to. But I'm just... looking at a promissory note that says, you know, you, you owe three hundred and ninety-five. I'd like to understand why you signed this. Your answer is, oh, I just I... left it blank for him to sign, but I don't like now what he put. And right. I will say that the question about the 395 is definitely her writing because it's legible. No, yeah, it's that's not. that's actually the nines. I notice that the nines are the same. They're like a sideways oval nine. You know, that's how most people do it, but still. Uh, that second hundred dollars, yeah. by the way, um, was also from the ATM because. Uh, yeah, I don't need to hear some, anymore. Some... Oh, but I do want to hear Ms. Everett this part. Did he hit up on you? Did he hit on you? Yes. yes. Tell me about that. <laughs> um, I want to know about him hitting on you. Yeah, that, that's it. He hit no, on me. No, um, I, that's a conclusion. I want to know what he said. Told me that I could sleep in his bed. Um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, and he, like I said, he also had the lady Lou, or I can't remember her name I'm sorry, exactly. I'm but... asking you to tell me just this. How did he hit on you? What did he say? Um... All kinds of things. He said that I was beautiful, uh, things like that, things of that nature. And then whenever I denied him, he did called have, me. Did you ever want, whenever you denied him, what does that mean? Denied him what? Like said no, like no. You're beautiful and, and to... your answer's no. No, no, I mean, I'm talking about sexual things. You're trying to tell me that he's only suing you because he's angry that you turned him down sexually. And I have to No, conclude... I'm not saying that that's why he's suing me. I'm not saying that's why he's suing me. Are you me. saying, saying that's, that's why big... he's lying about the amount? 
Yes, I believe, okay, yes. Okay, then now I need to go into it, because it's your defense. So I need to okay. know, and I'm going to ask you for the fourth and final okay, time. Okay, he wanted me to sleep with him. How he solicited you. What were the words he used? He wanted used? me to sleep with him. What were the words he used? Um, that he wanted to, he wanted me to do things with him. He wanted me to sleep with him. He wanted me to, to you know, to touch him, to do sexual things for him. And when I turned him down, it was, I'm a, I'm a, but like I said, it's, he started drinking at five o'clock. Can I ask you why, were you flirting with him in order to get money from him? No, for you or your sister not. or whoever else you were hitting him up for money from? Absolutely not. We are grown adults and he, you only do what you want to do. Okay. Um, not saying I felt comfortable asking him for money, but like I said, I asked him for the twenty dollars, the ten, okay. and the hundred. I never asked Show him for hundred dollars. Show me the promissory twice. note you're talking about that you signed that had a different number. You have it. No, that's yeah. the, that's the, the one I have says three ninety five, and if it was good enough for you, it's good enough for me. I'm ordering you okay. to pay the plaintiff the three hundred and ninety five dollars. Okay. So, Mr. McGill, the plaintiff prevails. He's going to get the $395 he's suing for. Ms. Everett, let me ask you what your response is. How do you feel about the judge's decision? He's a liar. Why is he a liar? Why do you say that? Because he, he just is. He is, but it's okay. Um, you know, he's got he's to face God, not, not me with that. So that's on him. All right. Well, you got to give him that money, $395. Yeah. That's what the court has said. All right. Mr. McGill? Uh, she said a lot of things about you that you were doing. Do you want to respond to what she was saying? Any truth to any of that? Well, I believe it was either Ogden Nash or, or Ashley Brilliant that said, I love the light that lies in women's eyes and lies and lies and lies. So that's about all there, there is all to that. That's all there is you want to say there. All right. Well, you're going to get the $395 back. Um, are you glad you filed a lawsuit against you? Did, you? did you think long and hard about that or not? Well, I am. I, I am. I wasn't trying to be vindictive or punish her or anything. I just wanted my money back. I'm just glad the judge didn't punish me for being foolish. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, Mr. McGill, you're, you're, you have prevailed. Congratulations. Good for you. Okay, come on. A blank promissory note, Doug. Ridiculous. And really leads to the point that judges are allowed to use common sense in deciding what's right and what's wrong, who's lying, who's telling the truth. In this case, it's pretty obvious. I have a 22-year-old daughter that can argue the stripes off a zebra. Do your daughters ever win arguments? And if so, please give us the gist of oh that. Oh, my God. I, we hear this all the time where people say, oh, I feel so sorry for your oh, daughters. Two kids. judges as parents. What's the I, they're fruit of discussion? our loins. Right. What do you think right. they're like? They're and we were both trial lawyers, and the three of them could argue anything all the time right. and do. Right. Our dinner discussion is just one giant argument. Well, yeah, everybody talking forth, over yeah, everybody yeah. else right. and the volume and you right. telling everybody lower and their I voices. Keep chiming in thinking one day I'm going to win one, but, you know, <laughs> so I never give up. I just I don't throw in the towel because the odds are in my favor. Eventually, I've got to win. One t one we have a, a family uh, text group that yeah. we call Squad, and then it's been going on for years, obviously. And sometimes I will scroll because I will have been wherever for an hour or two and i will scroll and there will be i'll scroll like a hundred times because right. you're all arguing over the text right some text political arguing text yeah. arguing about some politics, politics current and events, some current event right. that just happened right. it's nuts right.